one zero and lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. Houston now controlling Atlantis. This is the International Space Station, humanity's biggest star in the sky. For 25 years, it's been our home in space, but soon, NASA will deliberately crash it into the ocean. Why? And what happens when 450 tons of metal hits Earth at 27,000 km beats? Let's find out. After 25 years in orbit, NASA has decided it's time to end the ISS. But why? Well, it's complicated. The first module launched in 1998, back when NSYNC topped the charts and Titanic ruled the box office. Today, parts of the ISS are older than most TikTok stars. Space is brutal. Micrometeorites pelt it daily. Soar radiation fries its circuits. Even the air leak, astronauts once traced one to a drill hole accidentally made on the ground. Imagine your house, but every time something breaks, you have to wait for SpaceX to deliver a spare parts. Keeping this floating lab alive costs $11 million a day. That's 50,000 Netflix subscription, or one Jeff Bezos yacht. NASA engineers are basically space MacGyvers, patching leaks with epoxy, rebooting 90s era computers. But there's only so much duct tape can do. Here's the real problem. The ISS is constantly falling. Without monthly rocket boosts, Earth's gravity would drag it down uncontrolled in just a few years, and that would be bad. In 1979, Skylab's debris rained over Australia, and it was one fourth the ISS's size. Chunks the big could level a city block. The ISS wasn't designed to last forever. It's like a car with 50,000 miles. The other thing people don't realize, it's a machine just like your car, or your house, or your air conditioner. It's gonna break, and stuff does. It's just the nature of machinery. Because people sometimes say, what, it broke? What do you mean NASA has a thing that's broken in space? Well, yeah, it's, it's a machine, it's gonna break. And that's what we need to do, is keep it running. Eventually, repairs cost more than replacement. So NASA faces a choice, risk a chaotic crash, or steer it to a watery grave. And in 2030, they'll pull the plug. But how do you safely crash a 450-ton space station? That's where things get really tricky. NASA's plan sounds simple. Crash the ISS into the ocean. But in space, nothing is simple. ISS could smash into other satellites, creating a chain reaction of debris. Suddenly, no more GPS, weather forecasts, or SpaceX internet. Even now, the ISS dodges junk every year. In 2021, a Russian missile test shredded a satellite and forced astronauts to shelter in lifeboats. Deorbiting the ISS is like threading a needle while wearing oven mitts in a hurricane. See this? At 1,650 degrees Celsius, steel vaporizes. But titanium parts? They'll survive. And that's why NASA needs Point Nemo, this spot in the Pacific 700 kilometers from land. The nearest human? Often astronauts on the ISS itself. But here's the nightmare. If the ISS breaks up too early, debris could scatter for thousands of miles. So why risk it? Because not deorbiting it? That's worse. The ISS's death isn't the end. In fact, it might be the start of something even bigger. Before we say goodbye, let's ask, was it all worth it? 25 years, $150 billion, 241 astronauts from 19 countries. What did we actually get from this giant space tin can? I think all of the things we're working on are, are applicable not only to life in space, but to translate to Earth in, in, in some way. We're certainly working on life support systems on the International Space Station that will help keep crews safe as they go beyond low Earth orbit. And that can translate to health systems on Earth as well. It's a really robust science program that we have up here, and I think uh, you'll find a lot of benefits coming back to Earth. We grew human heart tissue in space. Turns out cells organize better without gravity. We made perfect fiber optics because zero-g eliminates flaws. We even studied fire, in space, on purpose. And yes, we perfected recycling pee into coffee, arguably NASA's most important achievement. The ISS taught us how to live in space, not just visit. That's priceless for Mars missions, retired astronaut.
During every Earth war these past 25 years, Americans and Russians kept working together. 250 miles up, take that geopolitics. It gave us culture too, like this literal space rock star. The ISS made space real for a generation. More kids want to be scientists because they saw real astronauts, not just Star Wars. Oh, and we proved space farming works. This lettuce took weeks. Theirs? Just one month in the ISS Veggie Lab. Everything we learned here, about tech, teamwork, even space plumbing, is why we're ready for moon-based and Mars. So when the ISS burns up, it's not just 450 tons of junk, it's every kid who looked up and dreamed bigger because it was there. This is the end of the beginning. Next time you see that bright dot in the sky, that's the legacy. Now, who is ready to build what comes next? Private companies are already building the ISS's replacements, some with space hotels. NASA's Lunar Gateway will orbit the moon, and in 50 years? We might laugh at the ISS like we do the Wright Brothers plane, cute but primitive. So when you see that fireball in, don't say goodbye. Say thanks for the ride.